Red Bull is ready to dominate this week's race. Fernando talks about retirement and more engineers joining Mercedes as the team continues to improve. Do consider subscribing. Now let's get straight into the latest F1 news. After four races of back and forth momentum swings between McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull, Naomi Schiff has tipped the ladder to walk it at the Spanish Grand Prix. After F1 2023's dominance, where Red Bull won all but one Grand Prix, this season the Milton Keynes squad is being made to work for their victories. Although Max Verstappen has won six of nine races, he has lost two of the last four in Miami and Monaco, was pushed to the line at Imola where he was a mere 0.725s ahead of Lando Norris, and was fortunate with the timing of a safety car in Canada. The season's stats have Verstappen with six wins, Ferrari with two, and McLaren with one. It has former W Series racer Schiff declaring three teams are in the fight. Every single race is going to make the difference now because they are three teams relatively entered with a chance to fight for this title, she said on the latest Sky F1 podcast. Barcelona should be the race that shows us who's in it and who's not, so let's just hold that thought for now. But while Schiff is dreaming of a title race, her fellow pundit and 1996 world champion Damon Hill believes Red Bull still has the advantage. And it's one that will be evident at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, as the track should suit the characteristics of the RB20. More to the point, there aren't a lot of curbs to trip up the Red Bull. I'm going to get a reputation for being the person who pours cold water on everyone's hopes, Hill said. I just think Red Bull will be much happier in Spain. I think their car will work. They don't have curbs to worry about. They've got long, sweeping corners. But having said that, I agree that McLaren has found something. They've made more progress than anybody up and down the grid, and they were also good on their tires. So tire wear, how they wear the left tire at Barcelona, it just absolutely eats through the tire. This is going to be a big test to see whether McLaren can actually run on a track like Spain. And that will then give us a clue for things like Silverstone, Spa, and some of the other circuits we go to that are like Barcelona. Schiff agrees Spain will most likely be on for the Red Bull win column. And weather forecasts as well, she added. What we've probably learned over the last couple of races as well is that the McLaren prefers a cooler track and the Red Bull prefers a warmer track. So if it is hot in Barcelona, with the degradation that there is there, I think Red Bull will walk it. I think there'll be, there'll be pretty dominant. But I think it is sort of on a knife edge, that car, where if the conditions just aren't right, if the tracks were too bumpy or the curbs, then it does throw the balance of the Red Bull out, which we haven't seen in the last two seasons. So let's see. I think there's still a lot to play for. Aston Martin driver Fernando Alonso has admitted the time will soon come when he must retire from F1 for good, conceding that he does not know what he will do after he walks away. Alonso, who will turn 43 next month, is by far the most experienced driver on the F1 2024 grid, having made his debut with Minardi at the 2001 Australian Grand Prix. The two-time world champion left the sport at the end of 2018 after a punishing spell with McLaren, but returned with the Alpine team in 2021 before moving to Aston Martin at the beginning of last season. After registering eight podiums in F1 2023, Aston Martin announced in April that Alonso will remain with the team until at least the end of the F1 2026 season, by which time he will be 45, having agreed a new contract with the Silverstone-based team. Alonso's extension will see him reunited with Honda, the engine manufacturer with whom he had an uneasy relationship at McLaren between 2015 to 17, who will become Aston Martin's technical partner in time for the F1 2026 rule changes. Despite officially withdrawing from the sport at the end of F1 2021, Honda have continued to offer technical support to world champions Red Bull, with Max Verstappen claiming his 50th victory in the last 75 races at last weekend's Canadian Grand Prix. Speaking to the Times, Alonso, who twice won the historic Le Mans 24 Hours race, as well as participating in the Indianapolis 500 and Dakar rally during his two-year sabbatical, has revealed he is mindful that the end of his F1 career is nearing. And he has revealed plans to change how he approaches racing to prevent F1 from taking away everything that makes him happy. He said, I know that it will soon arrive again, the moment that I will 100% say bye-bye to F1, and I don't know exactly what I will do. It's something strange because we are privileged people, only 20 in the world driving Formula One cars, so it's logical that you think you will love to do this as long as you are fast and you are happy. But at the same time, it's taking away everything in your life that makes you happy. 
Some adjustments will be done with my family coming to more races and this type of thing to try and have fewer downsides. Despite his recent success, Verstappen, 26, has frequently claimed over the last 12 months that he could retire from F1 sooner than many assume. Alonso has admitted he felt the same way at Verstappen's age, revealing he assumed his deal to join McLaren in 2007 would prove to be his final F1 contract. He explained, That's what I was thinking when I was at Max's age. I remember it was back in 2007. I signed a contract with McLaren for three years after being world champion with Renault, and I was 200% sure that it was my last contract. Then I thought that it was my last season in 2018, and I said bye-bye to F1 thinking that it was enough for my career. I found even when I decided to stop, I couldn't. Mercedes principal Toto Wolff is hopeful that his team can continue this positive trajectory after their Canadian GP breakthrough, with new staff and new parts set to help the cause. While Red Bull started out F1 2024 as once again the dominant team, rivals are threatening to complicate their run to the titles, with Mercedes sending a warning shot via their performance at the Canadian Grand Prix. Toto Wolff on Mercedes' new staff and Spanish GP upgrades. After introducing a new front wing in Monaco, Mercedes impressed at the Canadian GP, which followed. George Russell contended for victory at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, ultimately finishing P3 with Red Bull's Max Verstappen taking the win. Speaking to media after the race, Wolff was asked whether this serves as the turning point for Mercedes, the team having been searching for the answers to mounting a fresh title challenge since the F1 ground effect era came to be in 2022. Wolff spoke positively on the trajectory which Mercedes has been on since Imola, seeing performance added to the W15 at each race weekend and with further upgrades coming for the Spanish Grand Prix. While some new recruits are on the way, Wolff hopes this should help continue the momentum. I think definitely since Imola we have taken the right steps and put parts on the car that were working, said Wolf. That is something that we were struggling with in the past couple of years, and now directionally, we seem to be adding performance every weekend. And with new staff coming, also new parts coming in Barcelona, that should help us. So I would very much hope that we can continue this positive trajectory. Wolf admitted to being cautious about getting too carried away, though ultimately, the stopwatch will be the judge of whether Mercedes truly have now found the correct path. I am always a bit worried, you know, when you get carried away, he said, that everything seems to be now falling into place. Because this is a difficult sport, and we've had this positive trajectory now since the last three races, and everything seems to be making much more sense, so you know, the stopwatch will tell us. Russell's P3 in Canada was Mercedes' first podium of the season, as they set about tackling an 88-point gap to McLaren, who sit P3 and a position ahead in the F1 2024 Constructors' Championship standings. Balancing taking weight off the Williams versus upgrading the car, Alex Albon says that's the carrot that if the team can get right will yield a big step in F1 2025. After last year's strides forward, this season, Williams' results have taken a knock with the team scoring just two points in nine races. That, Albon says, is in part because the car is overweight. While his FW45 has been fitted with a lighter floor and other weight-saving parts, his teammate Logan Sargent is still waiting for the revised floor. But even with the new parts, Albon admits Williams are still some way off the minimum weight limit. There's still a lot of performance in weight, said the Thai British racer. We're still far away from where we want to be. We do have upgrades coming in, though that are performance as well. I would say the carrot at the moment is more towards the weight than the arrow side. And it is in some ways we are kind of comparing the two and seeing financially as well. It's a bit thing because losing weight isn't cheap as well. Alex Albon confident of a big step next season. But there is good news ahead of Carlos Sainz's rumored arrival for the 2025 season, with Albon revealing Williams are pushing ahead with small development steps with an eye to making a big step next season. I think at the minute we are kind of in a slightly different development path, he said. So this year is a little bit more smaller things each race. Last year was one big step, which was this weekend last year. In terms of development, it's still important because really the regulations aren't changing next year. So whatever you gain from this year, you move on to next year. The biggest thing for us as a team is honestly just to make sure we hit weight targets. That would be our biggest step forward. So if we can get the fundamentals right in that sense, we're going to make a big step as a team for next year. According to reports, Albon will have a new teammate next season with Sargent expected to be replaced by Sainz.
The Spaniard has reportedly been offered a four-year deal that includes an exit clause after year two should Williams not make the promised progress. Although Mercedes went through a dominant period in F1, Juan Pablo Montoya says they at least gave fans the competition they wanted as there was no number one or two driver. At Red Bull, who are on course for a third successive double this season, it is a different story with Max Verstappen the clear number one over Sergio Perez. This season, Verstappen is once again the driver to beat with the Dutchman already up to six wins, his tally double that of the other 19 drivers combined. While Carlos Sainz, Lando Norris, and Charles Leclerc have all won races, one surprise omission from the list of race winners is Verstappen's teammate, Perez. Despite being in the best car on the grid, although it is fair to say Red Bull's rivals have closed the gap, the Mexican driver has failed to match his teammates' results with his best showing a hat trick of P2. Verstappen's reign is nothing new in Formula One, with Mercedes winning seven doubles on the trot from 2014 to 2020, with Hamilton taking six drivers' championship titles. But the difference there, says Montoya, is that Mercedes gave both cars the opportunity. It was just that Hamilton was faster than his teammates. It's the same as when Lewis Hamilton won every race, although he still had a competitive teammate, the former McLaren driver told Formula One Diet L. Mercedes consciously chose to be competitive with both cars. Red Bull clearly has a different strategy. As a team, I can imagine that it provides peace internally, on a sporting level. But from a fan perspective, you most likely prefer Mercedes' approach. At least then you still had battle and drama on the track between the two Mercedes. This way, it is much more difficult and challenging to successfully run a team. Pressed on there being a hierarchy at Red Bull with one driver, Verstappen favored, Montoya replied, Exactly. At Mercedes, there was not a number one car and a number two car. They always managed to make both cars competitive, and the best proof is Nico Rosberg, who even became world champion alongside Lewis. And Valtteri Bottas has also won many races. And look, where are they now? Have they forgotten how to race? And did Max suddenly learn it? Nonsense, of course. This is just the nature of the sport. But essentially what we want is competition, an intense battle for the title. Reportedly deciding between Audi and Williams for F1 2025, Tom Clarkson says he would nudge Carlos Sainz in Williams' direction with their tried-and-test Mercedes power unit. Dropped by Ferrari even before the first race of this season, Sainz's options for F1 2025 have dwindled since the February announcement. Red Bull and Aston Martin took themselves out of the running as they re-signed Sergio Perez and Fernando Alonso respectively, while the much-speculated straight swap with Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes is also off the table. Mercedes are instead expected to sign junior driver Andrea Kimi Antonelli after Toto Wolff all but ruled out signs as he spoke of his plan to reinvent Mercedes, and Antonelli definitely plays a part in that. Left with a choice between Audi and Williams, Sainz has been urged to take up the latter, especially in light of F1 2026's all-new power unit regulations. Williams run Mercedes engines, and the last time new engines were introduced in 2014, it was the Brackley squad who gained a march over their rivals, whereas for Audi, F1 2026 will be the German manufacturer's very first season as a power unit supplier and works team. I would nudge him in the direction of Williams because I think there is still a lot up in the air with regard to the 2026 regulations, Tom Clarkson told the F1 Nation podcast. I think for an Audi team coming in doing it with a power unit for the first time. With so much up in the air, a tried and test manufacturer got it right last time there was a regulation change, I think we'll be quicker out of the box in 2026 than Audi. So that's the direction I'd go in. I think he'd work well with vowels. I think he'd work very well with Pat Fry, the technical director, and he'd work very well with Albon. According to reports, Williams have put a four-year deal on the table that includes an exit clause after year two should Williams fail to make strides forward. I quite like the romantic notion of making Williams great again, said Natalie Pinkham. And I really like the idea of Alex and Carlos teaming up because I think they will work well together. It's a tough one, isn't it? A tough call to make. How much goes on relationships? James Vowles has worked with some incredible drivers at Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton being one of them. He's an astute guy. I think perhaps that's a big draw for Carlos knowing about James's big intentions and ambitions for the team. I believe him. I buy into his dream and his long-term goal for Williams. But Audi is the same. Andreas Seidel is a great guy. 
They obviously worked together at McLaren and I gather got on very well there. Thanks for watching the video everyone.